Today I'm here at Stuart Haas Racing and I'm going to be talking with John Simmons, their machine shop manager, about how they leverage Mastercam and how they were able to adapt to the next gen chassis. Great to be back here again. Good to have you here. Since the last time I've been here, there's definitely been some changes with NASCAR, right? And I think you guys have probably had to modify how your business works. Absolutely. We've changed our business model. The next gen car, we have to buy a lot of our parts and everything from suppliers. We can't actually make those parts in house anymore, but, you know, we're making them for Xfinity. I noticed the shop is still in there cranking oh, yes. away. We're, we're still making parts. Yeah. We really have changed our business model with the next gen car. One thing that wasn't really talked about much early on was all of the tooling and fixtures and jigs and everything that had to be made to build these cars. So, you know, that still gave us a lot of work at the first of this year. I've heard you actually have some leeway in how the driver controls and some of the feel for the drivers too. Every one of the drivers likes a little bit of different feel, like to sit in the car just a little bit different and whatever. So NASCAR did give us some leeway there as to making the pedals more comfortable, making the shifters more comfortable yep. for the drivers. And we still have that envelope to yep. work in. One thing we did early on this season, getting ready, was we had to make a lot of our pit support equipment, tooling, jigs, and everything nobody else was supplying. So we had to do that in-house. I actually heard you guys are supplying some other teams with some of the tooling that you've done here. We did. One thing that we utilized, we took the track bar motor, which we used probably five years ago. It was a driver control track bar motor from inside the car. We actually repurposed that and now are using it in a transaxle jack to help us assemble this next gen car. Excellent. And that was components that you had programmed years ago in Mastercam that now you're you're reinventing and repurposing. Yeah. That's that's great. Absolutely. You know, we've worked together for a long time. You've had some significant Master Cam experience, and I know it wasn't just racing, right? I actually was first exposed to Master Cam in aerospace, probably back in the late 90s. Started in 98, 99, back about version 3, 4. I think Master Cam has always done a good job of, of improving the product. Probably the biggest change I saw was when we went to 2017. You know, it was a little bit difficult to learn to start with, maybe, because everything had been the same for so long. But now I probably put that old release back oh, yeah. in your hands, you wouldn't know what to do, no, right? wouldn't know which way to go. Uh, Mastercam has always done a good job of progressing and staying current. I'd love to go take a take a walk through the shop again and check it out. Let's do it. So this is the this is the jack you were telling me about? Yes, this is transaxle jack, the next gen car. You're not using a transmission and rear end housing like we did before. It's more oh. like the modern car is yeah. now using a transaxle. Okay. One thing that we started early on was with the weight and everything of this as, as one unit, well, we need something to help lift that and assemble it and put it in the car. Again, we took our track bar motor here, used the same acne thread screw and everything just like was in the race car, just shortened it up some. You're able to leverage your engineering department that you already yes. had set up to design this whole thing and really a useful tool. Yes, absolutely. That was the old switch that was on the dash? It's then? actually the same switch that was on the steering wheel for the driver. Oh, and you can run it up and down now. Yeah, over here on the screen, we've got the SolidWorks model. That's the actual, that's, that's actually the, the gearbox of the motor yes, and the motor housing. Yes, I like that those were actually ringing on the race car and then we yep. repurposed them. Excellent. We worked together on these years ago, actually, and I, I remember some of the first of the three plus two roughing you were doing in here. We started doing five axis work. Opti rough was a game changer for you. Absolutely. I remember you were breaking end mills, yes. three end mills, four end mills aside, yes. and we went to one end mill and roughed the whole part out. It actually was a lot faster, plus the tools were living yeah. a lot longer. This part kind of revolutionized a lot of the work you were doing across the shop floor and the, the approaches you were taking. It did. Several of the components that we're making start utilizing that same approach that we did here. Oh, and we're back at the transaxle jack. Yes. I, I think this is a great example of how you guys have adapted to a changing landscape in racing. It's pretty exciting to see how these new cars are performing. Absolutely. We've used some of our old technology, incorporated into yeah. this. We're still making a lot of Xfinity parts. And leveraging Mastercam the whole way through. Yes. <laughs>